Hi, stationary friends. Welcome to Ginger Peachy Stationery. My name is Sarah, and um, today I want to do the eight pen questions tag. Um, this was started by Simona of C. Monet and Leanne from Leanne Likes. Um, I've also watched Chris Sainz's video and Maria Rosso's video and um, Claire from The Ginger Ninja. So I will post their videos below, and then if you click on the hashtag, um, you'll, you should see like the other ones that are popping up. So, um, this is really fun and I was excited to jump in and did not want to wait until next Friday to film it. Um, so here I am. Um, so there are eight questions. I have, uh, my questions and some notes written down. And, um, so if you hear pages flipping, that's all that is. And then I tried to just give you some eye candy. Um, I thought about doing like a sit down, you know, where you can see me video, but it's Saturday and like I plan on staying in my pajamas <laughs> or like, you know, house clothes all day and not fixing my hair and stuff. And so this is what we're doing. So I'm not quite ready for that yet. But um, so the first question is, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? When I was a kid, my dad used fountain pens. He um, he has a small collection of Mont Blanc pens that he was able to earn through his job. Um, they earned points and they could spend them for different things. And so um, he acquired a small collection. I think he has, I don't know, less than eight or 10 pens, including ball points and roller balls. And a high he has the Mont Blanc 149 highlighter, which is hilarious, but he uses it, you know? Um, and he, these are all from the early nineties. And so, um, I saw my dad using a fountain pen. He still uses his 149 in a desk stand. Like it, it screws into a stand on his desk and like the cap just sits to the side always. And that's his everyday writer when he's at his office. Um, so I would see that and then he kind of got away from it for a lot of years. And then he came back to, to using them in the last five or six years. Um, but I didn't think much about it for me. You know, that seemed really fancy. And I always wanted to have handwriting like my dad's. It's really beautiful. And so for my whole life, I've, you know, practiced my writing and would be the kid who would spend an afternoon changing how I wrote my R's and my N's, you know, for school. And um, so, um, but as far as for me, I, when I was a kid, I had a couple of the, these, you know, Schaefer calligraphy sets. I'm not sure if this is my original one or not um it seems almost too new but you know these little sets with the the calligraphy nibs they're not wonderful and I don't think I knew how to clean them you know so I would just put in a new cartridge and the color would bleed together and I had no idea what I was doing with these but um I had one or two of these sets at different times growing up because I thought you know well I can't get it in there um, but I didn't really think those were fountain pens. Like I had, I didn't, that didn't register with me that this is a fountain pen. To me, fountain pens were like those really fancy ones that my dad had or like clip art, you know, <laughs> when they would do clip art of a pen, it would be a fountain pen. But I didn't really think of it as something that people actually use regularly, you know. So, um, you know, I would see like calligraphy dip nibs, like this kind, um, occasionally, but you know, that is also not a fountain pen. So, um, in 2010, I actually went back and found some dates on this, which I know you don't care, but, um, 2010, I discovered jet pens. I, I, I don't remember what I was looking for, but I stumbled up on Brad Dowdy at the pen addict. His blog was just a year or so old at that point. And, um, he, he was not really using fountain pens, but he, um, he pointed to jet pens. You know, he was working with jet pens at the time, I think. And so I ended up on jet pens. I bought a ton of gel pens um, over a few months. And then in February of 2010, I bought two Pilot Petites, these two little black and brown Pilot Petites. Um, and they came with one cartridge each. And that's actually the original cartridges in them. And I bought this glass pen, which I know is not a fountain pen, but with this, I bought a bottle of J. Urban Blue Nui, Blue Nui ink. Um, what you heard was me opening the drawer. I guess you don't need to see that bottle of ink, but, um, so I bought those things. And so, 
Um, I kind of used these pins a few times, um, but they were so small for one thing, you know, that they didn't really seem comfortable, not when I was a gel pen user. And the paper that I used was just regular school paper. And so, you know, they kind of feathered. Now I know that it's called feathering and, um, and bled, you know, on through the paper and stuff. So I didn't use them much. They kind of just lived in my drawer. I never cleaned them. I just, they just sat there and really for years they were, <laughs> you know, they would write every time I opened them. So that's a testament to these. They didn't dry out very quickly. Um, so I bought those in 2010, but didn't really use them much. And then in 2015, I had moved, I had a new job, I was um, out of school. And one day my boss, who I had been working for for a few years, um, he is the kind of person who like goes through major phases. Like he will deep dive into a topic. Like recently it was barbecue and he like got a smoker and listens to podcasts about barbecue. Like he's a deep diver into things. And he had discovered the Pen Addict podcast and um, he walked in and handed me a blue Lamy Safari and it had brown ink in it. And he said, here, try this. And I was like, what is this, you know? And of course I sort of then was like, I have seen fountain pens before, but wow. And so I think like within a day or so I had gone on Amazon and I ordered this neon coral. It was a limited color. It's probably for that year, Lamy Safari. Um, I got it with a fine nib and um, I just used the cartridge that it came with. And it was like, this is great. And then within within a month, I had purchased, um, well, no, a little more than a month. I bought this um, white Caveco Sport. Back then, you know, I had this thought of like, well, if I get white, then I can put every ink color in it. And um, I was not impressed with this one. I was disappointed. The nib was not great. Uh, uh, Caveco's nibs have improved drastically over the last um, five or six years. But um, was not very impressed with it, but bought some black cartridges as well. And then I went back to Amazon. No, I think I went to JetPens and bought, I went to JetPens and I bought this neon yellow Safari. And, um, <clears throat> and four little bottles like this of J. Airbon ink. And this one specifically, this Larmes de Cassis, is what clicked with me. Combined with this pen... Um, I loved this combination and I re-inked this over and over and I bought a converter. Um, I'm going to show you, I decided not to take these cards off, even though I'm going to have a few inks that I want to show you. Um, yes, this was my combo for a long time. I really enjoyed this, but I was pretty quickly, um, off to the races, um, in the fountain pen world. It did not take much for me to jump in and be like, this is what I've been looking for. So that is where I began. And it wasn't long before, um, actually this is one of my, one of my earliest pens is this green um, Twisby Diamond 580. I love this so much that I, a couple of years later, I actually bought a backup of this pen and I did sell it um, a year or so ago, a couple of years ago. Um, and since then, I've owned several of these and sold all of them except for this one and the Iris one. But um, anyway, I, um, yeah, that's how I got started into fountain pens. Um, my favorite inks in the beginning, I showed you that Larmes de Cassis was one of my favorites. Um, those, I mean, it was what I could get at Jet Pens. I wasn't extremely experimental. Um, I did go to Noodler's inks pretty quickly because they were inexpensive. And, you know, in the beginning you think, oh, I'm going to use these, <laughs> these whole bottles of ink, um, which is not, you know, the case unless you're really dedicated to one. But this Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel ink was one of my favorites from the beginning. It is a very lubricated, that's why it's called an eel ink. It's very lubricated ink, dark, saturated magenta, um, I still love this color, but I don't know if it's my bottle that it's just old and so it's kind of um, dried out a little bit, but but the ink does not dry on my paper. It's like some of the, maybe the water evaporated and so 
the ink now will sm smear for like hours <laughs> after I write. So I'm not actually using this one very much, but I'm thinking about maybe buying a new bottle of it and seeing if, if it's just my bottle is old. Um, still a favorite and um, another favorite that is still a favorite is Waterman Inspired Blue. It is a gorgeous bright blue um, with a red sheen, which sheen is not my favorite thing, but this ink specifically, it looks, I actually see some shimmer in it, but that's transferred from another, <laughs> from another card. It doesn't have any shimmer. Um, I love these bright kind of cerulean blue colors a lot. Um, so those were some favorites early on that are still favorites. Now, some of my most favorite inks are my Papier Plume inks. I love, love Papier Plume, not because, not only because they're kind of local to me within a couple of hours of where I live, and they make really good inks, but um, I love their colors. They work really well. Um, Pelican Edelstein inks um, are some of my favorite. One of my most favorites is, I love Olivine. I love Star Ruby. Um, is one of my favorite, favorite inks, and I love Smoky Quartz um, so much that <laughs> these two um, and Olivine are the three bottles of ink. I think they're the only three bottles of ink that I have backups of um, because I just really love these. And so I know that might be overkill, but they were limited, and so <laughs> I kind of jumped on it. Lately, I've loved these Roar and Klingner inks a lot. Um, Cassia is one of my favorites, Alt Goldgrun. Um, so anyway, I really have learned that I love saturated jewel tones. I don't love shimmers, though there are some that I do have inked up in pens and I do enjoy. I don't gravitate towards shimmers, um, because they just, I feel like they don't ever work like they're advertised <laughs> for me. Um, they don't clog my pens. I haven't had problems with them, but I've just feel like, you know, I don't use the same pen every day, all day. And so after a few days, it's kind of hard to get that glitter going. And so I'll just be writing and there's no glitter coming out. And so I end up cleaning it out and just washing the pen. Um, so, and sheening inks are not so much my favorite anymore either, just because they're a little more smearable. Um, I had the Organic Studio Nitrogen, which is like, you know, it's not quite the sheen machine, but it is very sheeny. And um, I actually ended up giving it away in OP. Okay. <laughs> Doing my alphabets here. Um, Organic Studio. Oh, well, there's Ralph Waldo Emerson. Can you see that? How sheeny it is? I don't know if you can see it. It's a very sheeny. There it is. Sheeny ink and nitrogen. Um, I took that card out of here because I don't have it anymore. That's why. Um is similar and it's uh I they just they kind of don't dry super fast I don't know their sheening inks are nice but they're just not my favorite anymore don't have to have a reason I guess um so how have your pen and ink chain ink tastes changed over time is number three um early on I loved um sheen I loved um trying everything with inks I'm talking about inks first I guess um, I went through a phase of loving desaturated inks. That's why I kind of put this here because a couple of years ago, I just inked everything with these like lighter desaturated inks and I do still like them. But right now I'm in a phase of loving more saturated, darker jewel tones. Um, you know, I love shading inks too. That's really my favorite. And, um, I don't do a lot of sheen or shimmer. Um, some, but not a lot. Um, I've just learned what I like, you know, like I've learned to look at pictures and not think, oh, let me try all of these 25 ink samples. I kind of can look at them and go, okay, that's beautiful, but I know that I won't use it um, as much as, you know, I would like to think, even though it's pretty. So as far as pens, I have always, I, you know, I started out thinking, let me buy neutrals so that I can put any ink in them. But pretty quickly, I was like, you know what? Nope. I love color. I love glitter. I love, um, unique pens. I love limited editions. Um, I have very few like of the standard colors, black, burgundy, blue pens. Most of what I own are brighter, excuse me, more fun colors. Um, 
I've always liked that, but I have had variation in my favorite nib sizes. So I've like, I started out with some fine nibs. Let me see what this is. That's a medium. I don't know if that's the original nib on there or not, but um, I started out with finer and then for many years, broad, broad nibs were my go-to forever and always. <laughs> And now I've kind of migrated back to, like, I really have found some fine nibs that I really love. Um, and I've kind of settled back on medium. Like, so I, that's, that changes back and forth. But I still love the bright, colorful, happy pens. Um, I have become better at knowing my tastes also with pens. And looking at something and saying, ah, I know I'm not going to love that. Um, I've learned that I don't like metal grips, um, or really metal pens in general, but it's specifically metal grips. So I've got a couple of those Retro 51 fountain pens, and they have plastic grips, which makes them more usable for me. Um, let me see if I can, oh, there's, this is my to be cleaned, uh, container. I know this would be highly stressful for some people, <laughs> but here's, here's a Retro 51, and the pen is metal, um, and there's something just really satisfying about, about it, but they've made their grips plastic. And so it's, it's better for me than some early on. I owned a couple of the Keras customs machined pens. And if you've seen those, if you like metal pens, go look at Keras customs, K with it, Keras with a K, Keras customs. Um, because I loved those pens, like they were gorgeous. They felt really nice to hold, to open, the nibs were great. I mean, they used regular Jovo or Bach nibs. They were really good, but the writing experience, it was just a little bit heavy. And I've said this before, I find metal grips to be too hard. Like plastic is not soft, but metal is just hard and cold. And I don't love pla uh, metal grips. I think I own one pen that has a metal grip anymore. Let's see. And it's a, a cheap one from Amazon called a Picasso. Here it is. And um, I don't use it a lot, but I think it's so cute. And it's a good little writer. I need to ink it back up and use it again. It's kind of slim for me. Um, but, you know, it's a nice little pen. So it stays because I think I paid like $15 for it. So it's not worth even selling. And... Um, I, I do like it. I like to use it from time to time. Are there inks and pens that you have, um, that you have yet to try, but would like to? Um, not a ton that I could come up with. I want to try some different nibs. I want to try zoom nibs like Sailor Zoom or, uh, music nibs. Um, I have never used an architect grind. I don't think that I would want it as my daily writer, but I've never even tried one. Um, and definitely would like to try a, a vintage wet noodle pen at some point. Um, but, you know, they're just, they're harder and harder to find and more and more expensive. So um, I'm not in the market right now. I would love to borrow someone's or maybe go to a pen show at some point and use someone's um, wet noodle flex pen. Um, as far as pens go, I just like to try all the things, you know, so when I see a new brand, um, I don't immediately go buy something, but like, I'm always intrigued, like, oh, I would love to try something from that brand or this brand. Um, but there are plenty of brands that I've never, you know, used before. I would like to try to get more pens from independent makers. Um, I just have a small handful, like I have... Um, a couple, these th a couple that I got all from the same, uh, person. They're by three different makers. Um, oh yeah, these are, these are these recent ones that all three came from the same pen friend. Two of them I purchased. One of them was gifted. Um, this is, uh, from Little Pen Designs. I, I bought that one. And I think I have three woodshed pens. This is one that I found on Instagram for, somebody was selling it for 45 bucks. Um, so yeah, I think I have three woodshed pens, um, that I really enjoy. So, um, I would like to try some more independent makers. Like this is one, two, one, two, three, four, five small maker pens. 
Um, I don't think Franklin Kristoff, they kind of match the aesthetic, but they're a bigger, a bigger brand. I've got, I, I love Franklin Kristoff pens. Um, as far as inks, like I said, I've kind of learned what I like. And so when I see something new, I usually have something similar. And so I'm not so quick to jump and buy ink anymore. Um, in fact, I, yeah, I pretty rarely buy ink, even samples, because I find that I get samples here and there. These were recently sent in a lemur ink order. Um, have yet to try these, actually. Um, I've been gifted some ink samples and one ink bottle recently, so I just am not buying ink much, but I'm looking forward to the Pelican Rose Quartz. I want to see, I'm, I'm excited for it to be available and start to see some reviews and some pictures. Um, and then really excited for that rose quartz pen that will probably come after that. I love the Pelican um, M200 series. Um, you know, every uh, yearly editions. That's a, the Aquamarine. Um, I love those. I use them frequently. Pretty much always have at least one inked up. Here is um, last year's Appetite. I'm sure these are still available. Um, I have Rose Quartz. Oh, no. I have, uh, what am I trying to say? I have inked up uh, the Golden, ooh, ooh, sorry, the Golden Barrel here and the Star Ruby um, are both inked up right now. So um, I look forward to hopefully the Rose Quartz one later this year. Um, what is your Holy Grail pen? Oh, I meant to get my iPad so I could show you a picture of this. Oh, I'm going to insert a picture um, here <laughs> of my Holy Grail pen. It is one that I just stumbled up on one day. It is the Mont Blanc Patron of the Arts Catherine the Great pen. The price has more than doubled on eBay in the last, in the last three or four or five years that I've been sort of... Uh, watching it. It is way out of my price range, like way out of my price range. Um, but, um, yeah, if I ever had the chance, if I ever had the chance, the Mont Blanc Catherine the Great pen, I think it's so beautiful. I just am so drawn to it. There's a green one too that's called Peter the Great. Um, the green one is beautiful as well, but that Catherine the Great just, oh, it just has my heart. It's so beautiful. So maybe one day, I'm not going to ever say never, you know, because I do love it. Number six, how many pens do you currently own? Okay, so I have all my pens loaded up into the Fountain Pen Companion website. I highly recommend Fountain Pen Companion. And I own 127 pens. So that is plenty. Um, but what I will say is that I have 19 Twispies, most of them Ecos, only three of them are not, four of them are not Ecos. Um, and then I have a Twisby Go, a Mini, and two 580s. So um, I have 19 Twisbees, so that's a big chunk of that 127. I have 13 Cavecos, Cavecos and only two of them are not sports. So um, the student, and I have one Perkeo. So those are, you know, lower level pins. Um, I have 12 Franklin Kristoffs. And I'm not sure if that's still right. I need to look at those. Um, here's um, most of my Franklin Kristoffs that are not uh, either in use or waiting to be washed. Um, that's a Leonardo. And I love Franklin Kristoff. And when I, when I started, when I got my first Franklin Kristoff, that was pretty much all I bought for a while. I loved them. Um, I do love them still. Um, I own 12 pilot pens, and some of those include the Petites. And the I have a Metropolitan and a Prera and a Kakuno. So, um, and let me see. 10 Platinums, including four... Of these platinum meteors, four of these and a um, a platinum plazier, um, 
and yeah. So that's a big chunk of those. I have nine pelicans because I love the pen of the year Ooh, pens. Um, and eight Esther Brooks. So I don't, I'm not trying to collect all the Esther Brooks, but when they are my favorite, you know, when I see them and I'm like, this is for me, then I do, um, like the special edition Pelican. I mean, nope, Esther Brook Estes. So there's two of them actually there. Can you see those? Yeah. Sea glass and candy. Um, and then I have five Bennu pens. So adding those up... That's more than, that's almost half, or maybe a little more than half of my pens are in these kind of bigger collections. Um, so, and then, you know, I have some Jin Hows and so anyway, maybe this is me justifying to myself, but it's not like every one of these pens was a $500, I mean, I actually don't have any $500 pens, but um, yeah, so 127 Ideally, I wanted to keep it at 100. That was just an arbitrary number. 100 pens seems like plenty. I mean, it is. It is plenty. But um, but then it was like, well, maybe I won't count, you know, the cheapest pens. Maybe I won't count the beginner pens. And then it's like, okay, well, where the, where is that line? Is the line at, you know, $32 Twisbees or is the line at the $50 Prera or... <laughs> Like, where is that line? So, you know, those numbers kind of get skewed. Um, so, and then as far as inks, I know this wasn't in the question, but in Fountain Pen Companion, I was able to see that I own 203 inks, including 116 bottles. However, I was like, that seems like so much because my drawer that I keep bottles in is full, but it doesn't have that many inks in it. It's a smallish drawer. But a large majority, I mean, a large portion of the bottles that I own are these little bitty uh, 10 mil um, Airbon inks. And like I have these small Papier Plume ones. Um, so a lot of them, and I, I like, I prefer the 30 mil Diamine inks to the big, bigger ones. So um, yeah, and then I have 82 ink samples and included in my... Um, chart was five cartridges that have bought little packages of so do you have a limit on pins in your collection is it a number is it a feeling when do you know that you have reached your maximum so I've kind of answered that but I don't have a limit um I do want to uh I just want to be mindful and I know that to a lot of people this is not going to seem mindful at all but I have really gotten pretty good at looking at my collection and going I have not used this in a long time and or it doesn't speak to me anymore you know I don't have a connection with it anymore and letting them go so um but when it comes to like under $30 pens $35 pens I don't really see the point in selling them because you can't sell them for very much you know so um but for anything more than that like, yeah, I have gotten to where I'll move them out. And in fact, I recently sold two of my earliest Esterbrook pens because I just was like, it was one of them I've showed on this channel was a tortoise shell um, SD. And I never liked the pattern of the material on it. Like it just, excuse me, it had like a big clump of yellow here. And like the whole top of the cap was the dark brown. It wasn't like a well-distributed material nothing wrong with it. And the person who bought it from me loves it, you know, but that always kind of bothered me. And so actually making one of these videos about pins I would not repurchase, um, kind of prompted me to go ahead and say, you know, let me let this go. I can always get another tortoise SD down the road if I want to. And I really actually don't feel the need to. So I've gotten a lot more mindful of like what I'm going to like, not just buying things to try them so much as like really watching reviews and paying attention to what will I like about this? What might I not like about this pen before I buy it? And being better about selling pens. So my actual number of pens has not changed drastically over the last two years or so. Um, and yeah, so it's something I wrote down was that I am working on how I can track um, my pen usage a little bit better 
and what I've used recently, um, I, you know, I have my cola decks that I put, um, my ink swatches in, in color order. And I love that. Um, but I'm going to add to it. Um, I'm going to add to it my pens, my fountain pen collection. And I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is instead of like having to write on here when I used it and stuff, I'm just going to move them to a different section as I use them. So that after a while, I'll have a whole section in, in the back of pens that I have not reached for in a long time and can, you know, help that, like help me be honest with myself about like, I have not reached for that. I need to let it go. Um, so some form of tracking is kind of important to me. Editing Sarah here. Um, I wanted to add something really quickly. Um, with this, you know, pretty large number of fountain pens, um, I was listening to um, Leanne and Simona um, and even Chris mentioned this about how um, long it would take you to use all of your pens in a, you know, to, if you've had 10 pens per month, um, how often you would actually use any given pen. And um, my remedy to that is that I never ink pens all the way. I get that there is like a satisfaction in filling a, a converter to its full capacity or a vacuum filler or a piston filler. This actually has uh, water in it because I was, I don't know, I don't remember why I put some water in it. But you know, I mean like there's some satisfaction in having a really full pen and I get that, but I like to switch pens all the time. And so like, I don't like that feeling of, um, well, this, I'm kind of tired of this pen right now, not like for life, but I'm kind of tired of it right now, but I hate to waste the ink that's in it. You know, you don't always want to put ink back in a bottle. Um, and so then I feel like I'm guilt using a pen just to use up the ink so I don't waste it. So I have started, I mean, the last several years, I only put a little bit of ink in a pen. Like this pen, when I inked it, I only inked it, what, less than a quarter of the way? I mean, it's actually more than that because there's ink in the feed, you know, too. Um, usually I put less than this in a pen. So, um, and it's still, I mean, this will still last me more than a month because I have, you know, 10 to 20 pens inked most of the time. So um, I just put... I love to watch people's like, here is my March currently inked video. And these are the pens I'm going to use in March. And it's very methodical. And I'm going to use these. I'm going to report back. Like, I love that, you know. But for me, I like to just ink a pen a small amount, use it. And when it is empty, clean it or <laughs> put it in the, <laughs> the to-be-cleaned pile and then allow myself to ink something else whenever I want to, you know. Um, and so they're kind of just in and out of my pen cases all the time. And I do have a um, a notebook where I track like how long a pen has been inked. But I've never had a problem with a pen that's even been inked for more than a year. Um, I don't use Iron Gall inks or really even permanent inks specifically. Like I don't, you know, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, never had a problem cleaning a pen. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but not an issue, you know, and, um, but so I've learned with myself to just put a little smidge of ink in there. And then as soon as it's gone, you know, or even not quite gone all the way, I will go ahead and put it to be cleaned if I'm just kind of tired of grabbing it, you know, so I can put something else in my pen case. So, um, don't be afraid to not fill your pen all the way. You know, you don't have to like, that's the beauty of using ink samples and ink bottles is like you can get as much as you want in there or as little as you want and just stop. And then if I still really am loving it, I mean, this candy um, SD has not been uninked pretty much since I got it. I think it was in a to be cleaned pile for a while, but I think I cleaned it and then put ink back in it. <laughs> So most of the time when it gets empty, I just go back and fill it again, but I don't fill it to the top. I fill it about halfway um, so that if I get to where I'm ready to put this one away for a while, to clean it and put it away for a while, I don't feel guilty wasting, 
you know, two thirds of a converter of ink. It's not that much, you know, but I mean, I'm sure we all feel that like you hate to just dump it down the drain when it's money spent. So anyway, that's how I make use of this many pens is by not filling them all the way so that I can rotate them in and out very often. All right, uh, back to the rest of the video. Um, as far as inks too, I really don't have a limit, but I've already said I am not in the acquisition phase with the inks anymore. It's very rare that I buy them. So I don't have a limit, but I'm also trying to kind of use my samples up a little more. I've been sharing some with friends um, and just not buy things that are similar to what I already have or buy things that, you know, I might not love. Um, so, but I'm grateful for the ones that I've received as gifts. <laughs> so then the last question is, consequently, what would you do if another pen or ink came along? So I would consider how similar is it to something I already have. Um, if I buy, I might consider if there's something else I can let go of. Um, I won't let, I don't have any rules, um, so I won't do necessarily a one in, one out. But I am kind of mindful of that, like, is there something I can let go of that I'm going to prefer less than this one? And um, so if I have the budget for it, you know, then no, I don't really have a, you know, I'll get what, what speaks to my heart. So um, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have any questions, certainly feel free to comment. I am excited to keep seeing people's videos. Um, I hope this is not huh, too crazy. And um, I hope you like my new little peach dish. I found this at a um, big uh, citywide like yard sale recently. I did I, I didn't see this little chip in it until I got home, but not a big deal. But uh, this just makes me really happy. So for ginger peachy stationery, I now have my little um, vintagey, probably you know probably nineties. I'm thinking little peach dish. So yeah, cute, cute. Um, anyway, y'all have a great weekend, a great week, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you will um, consider subscribing to my channel and sticking around. Um, I've uh, I've just been really happy with how this has gone and making new pen friends and um, creating some relationships. Go follow me over on, or go find me over on Instagram. That's where, you know, I really enjoy chatting with um, friends. I've got... Um, gotten to make some really actual real like real life friends through Instagram um that way so yeah please go and find me ginger peachy pins is me over on Instagram so anyway I cannot wait to see some more of these videos it is open to anyone who wants to participate so please jump in and tell us answer your eight pen questions and I will see you next Friday bye